Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Jesus. So we have little technical difficulties right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Holy Spirit come. We just thank you for all you're doing in my life. We have um, part two right here. So we just give you all the glory, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. Thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for reconciliation. Reconciling us. Thank you for unity. Thank you for peace. Thank you for patience. Thank you for power. Thank you for anointing. Thank you for healings. Thank you for pardoning us, Father God, for your son's blood, for making a way for us to be forgiven and reconciled. Thank you for favoring us and trusting us to be leaders, to reach the laws, to change the world for the kingdom. To reconcile those lost, hurting souls back to you. In Jesus' name. And I pray that our hearts and minds be opened up to this word. Realization, relationship, and reconciliation. Those three. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Amen. The Lord has given me. So, um. <clears throat> just want to say hallelujah <laughs> be bubbling up with joy i feel it feel the peace feel the love and you have to fight to be free don't let nobody keep you down amen amen hallelujah let's all live in power unity joy and peace hallelujah so here we go we're gonna finish this part two right here um recap we went we were started with realization realizing who you are in Christ and what we're doing here on the planet earth you know realizing and that comes through relationship and then there's reconciliation that happens through that relationship after you realize who you are and what's going on in existence where we're at in the story of life and a lot of people need to know that on this planet earth still they don't know what we're doing here on the planet earth amen and um not amen that's not no you know they need to know what we're, what we're doing here what is life you know, not um, can you just be a Christian religiously join us, be a Christian, come to my church, but to just realize that you were created by God, you know, and a lot of us need to realize that we're lost or, and we need to be the God's hands and feet to show them to realize that, hey, can I help you realize who you are today? What do you mean? Help me realize who I am. Like you were created by God. You know, you're not here by accident. So that's a beautiful thing we are entrusted to do to help God help people realize who they are amen um, that's a beautiful purpose beautiful plan God has for our lives to be reconciled and to give him the glory by uh, passing that along so amen thank you God hallelujah excuse me for always burping for always eating I ate a jalapeno with some ham or turkey tastes so good mm. <laughs> That's fresh jalapeno right there. Okay, so we'll continue on to the third part, reconciliation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. <laughs> We're going to just praise Jesus through everything we do, amen, and be reconciled back to him and our character, our hearts, our mind, our personality. That's his precious promise to um redeem us you know everything that the enemy stole while we were in sin or lost in our ways in the world you know we we um, give our life to god through realizing who we are and then through a relationship we walk it out and then um this is precious promises to reconcile us back to god and redeem us you know that's maybe the fourth r redemption so um we on a roll with those r's well holy spirit is hallelujah <laughs> so here we go the next scripture is out of Malachi chapter 4 verse 6. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. Hmm. So I believe there's there's so many different facets, facets of reconciliation that God has given me. Um, but that is a great scripture that God brought me to. That he's reconciling us, his sons and daughters, back to him. You know, it says the um, the parents, the hearts of the parents to their children. So he is a he is a um, a great parent. He is our father in heaven, and he's reconciling us, his children, back to him through Jesus. So that is a beautiful, beautiful reconciliation right there. 
beautiful scripture, excuse me. And um I believe he's he's doing that just, you know, in our little world in the natural too, just our parents back to the children, children back to the parents, brothers and sisters, so many reconciliation through him and his blood, and that's the spirit that's pouring out from heaven, you know, for us to be reconciled back to our family, our loved ones, our friends. And um that's a beautiful thing that he does. That's that's his heart to do that. Not only to reconcile us back to him through Jesus, but one another. You know, we should, you know, forgive. Forget what, what your brother and sister did. Forgive and be reconciled back to your family. And if you don't have family, you have family in the church or someone else, your brother and sister, you know, new friend that you make is your family. Be reconciled. So don't ever lose hope in that, you know, that you could be reconciled back to your family, back to your, back to your loved ones, your brother that you haven't talked to for years or your sister or your dad or your mom. And, um, you know, we all could have a chance to do that. That's what um, Jesus died for. There's so many things that he died for, but it's to, the main thing is to reconcile us back to God. And that doesn't stop there. That spirit of reconciliation should be amongst one another as well. So that's a beautiful scripture right there for us to, you know, come back to our parents and our parents back to us. And I see a lot of brothers and sisters that's happening to right now. And even for me, starting to talk to my mom again and forgive her for stuff that really wasn't her fault in the past or my dad too as well. You know, they're just broken and living in the fallen world too so reconciliation is a beautiful thing after you have a relationship with jesus and realize who you are in him so that's a beautiful precious promise for us to be reconciled back to one another back to god through jesus and back again to one another and vice versa and it goes all around the love just keeps flowing amen hallelujah <laughs> so let's see we're gonna go into proverbs now Proverbs 14, I hope you guys are paying attention, you got your Bibles, if you don't got a Bible, you know, go online and grab one, I would suggest New, Ch New King James Version, or also, you know, get a study Bible as well, those are really good, uh, I believe Thomas Nelson, those are good, and uh, you can go to the store as well, and grab one at the store, uh, I love going to Barnes & Noble, going to the Bible section, always looking at new Bibles and buying a new Bible, but you don't always need a new Bible, you know, you got a Bible, read the Bible, <laughs> get in the Bible and read it, amen, but yeah, if you don't have a Bible, go get one, and uh, get in the Word, so here we're going to jump on to Proverbs 14, verse 9, fools mock at making amends for sin, but goodwill is found among the upright. Right relationships are so difficult to maintain, but essential in the body of Christ. Ooh, that's fire right there. That is fire right there. I'll read it one more time. Proverbs 14.9. It says, Fools mock at making amends for sin. But goodwill is found among the upright. Right relationships are so difficult to maintain. But essential in the body of Christ. So the Lord gave me that scripture because he wants me and you and all of us to hear that. You know, that it's important to him. It means something to him for us to repent of our sins to be reconciled back to him and um, to maintain right relationships amongst one another that's reconciliation reconciliation excuse me I stumbled with that word but to be reconciled back to one another and maintain that you know reconciliation amongst the brothers and sisters in the church whether it be pastors or uh, leadership in the church or just the congregation or brothers and sisters, whoever you are, to not hold a grudge for two years, three years, four years, four months, four days, 
you know, I get offended by a lot of things too that my pastors do or people in the church do. And um, I need to fight to maintain that peace, that love, and just go, I forgive you. We're all human. And I'm sure there's a lot of things I did where they go, and this dude, we don't know about this dude, or, you know, he said this or did this. But all of our hearts are being tested. Are we going to love like Jesus did? Are we going to, you know, choose to keep those relationships solid? Are we going to choose to continue to love that brother or that sister after they did us wrong so many times? So it just shows us where our heart is at. Amen. And I believe God really spoke to me to, to I've never even heard that scripture. I probably read it before, but because it's in Proverbs, but let's see. Just that he brought that up. Fools mock at making amends for sin. Like, oh, I don't need to make amends for sin. I don't need to be reconciled and atone. But goodwill is found among the upright. Amen. Amen. Right relationships are so difficult to maintain, but essential in the body of Christ. Why would they be essential? It's difficult, but we must fight for that to maintain them. And they're so essential because our livelihood depends on it, our breakthrough, our blessings, um, our unity, which would bring other people's breakthrough and blessings through us maintaining a right relationship so that the body can flow fluidly as one, connected with nothing that's um, hindering us or disconnecting us. So I believe that's why it's essential. I don't know why you guys would think, but whatever comes to your heart and mind. But for me, I feel it's essential for us to come together as one so that we can heal one another and reach the loss together and be a blessing as one unit in the community and in the world so that's a beautiful thing that's very essential amen so hallelujah glory to god on that <laughs> praise god so that's in the reconciliation bracket section whatever you want to call it for us to be reconciled you know back to one another back to our family back to our parents back to god and back to one another in the body of christ and to maintain that you know, to be reconciled, and he died for that too. So, glory to God. Hallelujah. Whoop, whoop. Raise the roof. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So, we're called to be reconciled to right standing with God and people. Amen. That's the recap on that. He died that we may be reconciled to God and to one another through the blood. So, he, he came to, to mend us. To uphold the law, to uphold us, to connect us. He came to, to be the glue. The blood is cleansing and binding and powerful and strong. To reconcile us back to God. It must be that powerful. To reconcile us back to God and to one another. And that's a beautiful thing. Hallelujah. Alrighty. Now, let's go. Let's move on to the next, to the next scripture. Last but not least, I believe this is the last one. This is part two of the relationship. No, realization, relationship, and reconciliation series. Amen. This is part two. So let's get it. The last scripture is out of Romans 12, 2. Chapter 12, verse 2 out of the book of Romans, which reads, Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good pleasing and perfect will amen so um, I believe the Lord chose that to be reconciled back to God through his word so we're not to be conformed to the ways of the world that's that's being lost in the patterns of the world the pattern that's taking you this way into the world which is away from god away from being reconciled back to him taking you further from god further broken further disconnected so that's not what god wants god wants us to be renewed reconciled back to him through his word and the renewing of your mind through reading the word. 
to prove that perfect and acceptable will of God. So I believe that's another way he reconciles us back to him and to us and to right standing of who we are and how we're supposed to believe and think and behave is through the word. So that's a, that's a beautiful thing to be reconciled back to God through the word. Not just the power of the blood. Yes, 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 and yes. But I believe it's on us. We have a responsibility to be reconciled by the way we think, the way we act and behave. And that comes from reading the word. That's what renews us and reconciles us. Is staying in the word and letting it overtake us, engulf us, and be one with us. That we know the word so much, we breathe the word, we eat the word, we see the word, we smell the word, taste the word. We start to become the word and act like God through the word he's given us. Amen. And that'll change the way we think and act and behave. And construct our beliefs according to the Bible through Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to the ways of this world and the patterns thereof, but be transformed, reconciled, renewed back to God through the way that you think. But that's from the word, through the word of God, the renewing of your mind. How does your mind get renewed? How do you get reconciled? How? How? By abiding in his word, not just his presence, but his word. What does his word say about you? What does his word say about you and your your character, your heart, your mind, your existence? What does it tell you the way you should act or behave? What is his word? Who does he, who does he say that you are in his word? Who are we in God? So that's a crucial thing to be reconciled back to God and one another. And to hold those right standing in relationships that he that he says we should have with him well how do i do that god how do i have um a relationship and maintain a nice perfect peaceful loving relationship with you and people around me well it shows it in the word how we're supposed to forgive how we're supposed to act behave and think and that's what cleanses us that's what prepares us for heaven and the relationship with one another that's what purifies us to be Christ-like to one another and to be kind and caring, compassionate, selfless, all in the word of God. But we have to digest, dissect that word. We have to digest that word. We have to ingest it and digest it. It has to become a part of us. Amen. And then we can pour out to God through the word and to others. From God to the word and to us and then out to others. Be reconciled reconciled and renewed through reading his word amen and that's how we will learn how to love one another and treat one another and behave in the community and if we had more of that today the world wouldn't be so messed up but it's on us to get in that word and conduct ourselves according to that word and uh, it's an ongoing you know relationship with god through his word and uh, we might fall short every day but as long as we make amends at night and repent and go where was i wrong today lord let me not go to sleep angry let me not go to sleep you know in a wrong standing with you you know constantly read the word throughout the day if you can or in the morning or find those times at night to get in the word or whenever you get in the word you know whenever you have time but get that alone time with god in the word and search your heart before you get in the word but you know let the word search you that's what it really does the word searches your heart and shows you and me shows us where we're wrong so um that's a beautiful thing to not forget the word and once again glory glory to god but i honor my pastor you know um, he comes from a background of really getting into the word you know he, he tells us you know i think god is telling us to get back into the word it's you know, the moves of God, the spirit is awesome, the anointing and oh, pop locking all day. And, you know, you got this whole thing going on, you know, you know, you're doing all this stuff in the church. <laughs> you, you pop locking. I'm always, you know, popcorning on the ground, getting hit with the glory and Holy Spirit's having me do backflips and spins and stuff like that. But he says, that's amazing. Beautiful moves of God, the power of God and healings and anointings, which is wonderful. But he's saying the meat and potatoes, we got to get back into the word because that is powerful. That's solid, you know, and I, I don't. 
what man I, I don't I don't you know sometimes I still understand like a child the word says you gotta start to change the way you think so I you know we might get offended or go what why is my pastor saying this or saying that like the glory of God is here you know the fire of God the anointing the spirit of God are moving hallelujah get crazy you know but they're they're trying to teach us hey the solid meat and potatoes but what about when you leave the church or you know what are you gonna act like how's your character your behavior what is you grounded and rooted and solid in the word the meat and potatoes of the word that's what's gonna you know change your life that's more powerful than you just getting a little twitch and getting hit and you know not that i'm against that either not they're not saying that either you know but they're saying what's really gonna bring lasting change to you is getting into the word of god and letting it change let it seep into your being your thinking the way you think seep into your heart the way you act what's coming out of your heart what's coming out of your mouth coming out of your mind you know your behavior everything you do everything you are so um that's a beautiful thing is to really get into the word and um i need to do that more even tonight amen so dive deeper into the word and let it you know reconcile you back to right standing with god and right state of mind and heart and character and being so, amen, the word of God will do that. It'll reconcile you. It'll redeem you. That's a way that he reconciled us back to him is through his word. So that's a beautiful thing. We're going to end it on that right there. So recap is realizing who you are in God. Realizing who you are. You know, who am I? I want to realize. I want to know what we're doing here on this beautiful planet. You know, what is life? What is existence? What am I doing here? once I realized, wow, I was created by God, and uh, I'm not an accident, you know, I was created by God to be here for a purpose, a big purpose, there is no other you, there's no one else but you, there's no, there's no other you, you're very special, you're very beautiful, very powerful, you're very important, you're going to make a difference, you are so important, you're very needed by the world. There's no other person like you. You're beautiful. You're favored. You're loved. You are special to God. You were created for a purpose. To love and be loved by God. To reach others. To contribute to creation. Whatever it is how he made you. You were called and created to contribute. And to be here. You have worth just the way you are. You don't have to do things to earn worth. You are worth so much worth just the way you are. So once you realize that, you have a shift in heart and mind, shift in heart and know, hey, I am special. I'm not just wandering around the earth for no reason. I'm not just here to take up space or to eat and sleep and continue carrying on, go to work and then back again. You're here for a higher purpose. You are loved. You are beautiful. God smiles at you. He has a little crush on you like a little kid at school. He just sits there like, I love you so much. I can't wait for this person to realize that I created them so I could spend time with them. That's the whole purpose of you being created. For God's enjoyment, his pleasure. To love on you. And you back on him. That's the beautiful thing about realizing who we are in him. Amen. And relationship. That's the second part. To say, hey God, I want a relationship with you now that I realize you created me and who I am. I want a relationship with you now that I realize who I am. And what we're doing here on this earth. I want to know more. Come into my life and build a personal relationship with me. Let's go back and forth. Let's walk this out. Let's talk together. Good, the bad, and the ugly. Your hurts, your pains, your questions why. So many questions I had growing up. Why? Why did this have to happen? But he has all the answers. And he'll give them to you if you're willing to ask him. 
no matter what it is. Just talk to God through that personal relationship. And he will bless you with all the answers, even if they may hurt. Well, that's that's not cool, God. But he's here to comfort you in those answers. I love you and show you that he cares. If no one else cared, God cares. Amen. So, the third one is to be reconciled through that relationship and realizing who you are back to God back to a right state of mind and being and thinking and behaving and that's his precious promise those are part of his precious promises that he will reconcile you back to him to your family to be in right standing in the community you know no matter how far you've gone down that path or down that road with your own self or fleshly desires or the enemy or generational curses or all the above or just not knowing what's going on, what life is. It's, it doesn't matter. God's precious promise is to reconcile you back to himself through a love relationship with Jesus Christ. So, amen. God will restore you. So, Realization, who you are, relationship with Jesus, and then being reconciled back to God through Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. I pray you have a wonderful day, wonderful evening, and I plead the blood over you. I bind up any infirmity or any spirit of the enemy that wants to attack you in Jesus' name, and I release from heaven wonderful angels, blessings, anointings, callings, gifts provision, power, and purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. And uh, I thank you guys. I throw kisses your way all day. Hallelujah and glory to God. We thank you for another wonderful evening and a chance to glorify your name through this platform. Bless you guys. I'll see you. Have a wonderful night. <laughs> Hallelujah.